Like I said, in after hours, it went up to 435 today. We are sitting at like a 400% gain on this stock. Just calm down. Hey everybody, Walrus here from Walrus Street. I wanted to do a short video today covering the price action of BioNanogenomics this week and a couple of new interesting articles. Before we get started, please remember I am not a financial professional. All information in this video is for entertainment purposes only. I want to give a shout out to a couple of other financial YouTubers who did credit me for being the first YouTuber to jump on the BNGO train this week. I made my video, I published it about 48 hours before anybody else did. So a big shout out to my financial friend and Matthew James. Both of them did give me credit in their channels and I really do appreciate that. If you're not subscribed to them, please give them a subscription. Go and like their videos, check them out. They definitely have some integrity and integrity is the single most important thing in a financial YouTuber. You want people to be trustworthy that you're getting your financial information from. To the other YouTubers who I saw making videos about BNGO, who basically just ripped off my content from my video, thank you guys so much. That's very original of you. Yeah. I'm not salty, not at all. We had quite the run up this week. Bio nanogenomics, when I made my video, it was at 69 cents. It closed on New Year's Eve at 308. It ran up another buck after hours, 404. I actually saw it go as high as 435. The volume has been insane all week. Today was 431 million. It's been above 420 every day this week. Last Sunday when I made my video, the average daily volume for this stock was like 11 million, something along those lines. Just in the week above 420, 20 million. We've brought the daily average up to 24. Uh, this is this is just crazy. So this is the chart for this week. We do have the golden cross with the 50 going over the 200. The big gap up this week, all week. RSI's way overbought. MACD's trending positive. It's hard to do any technical analysis when a stock has these gigantic movements because the charts end up taking a while to balance out. Most TA is backward looking. Full disclosure, this is my position in bio-nanogenomics. I made my video at 69 sense. But by the time the market opened on Monday morning, and I was able to actually make my purchase, it was 88 cents a share. That really didn't discourage me though, because nothing changed from when I did my research to when I made my purchase first thing on Monday morning, the fundamentals were still there. I was still interested. I still knew there was room to grow. And all of the analysts were predicting prices of about a buck 42 to a buck 50. So I knew there was room to grow. I went in at 88 cents a share. I had no doubts in my mind, full confidence. And right now it's sitting at a value of about $4,000 off of an $880 investment. So hooray for that. This is something that I do not see very often. Bio nanogenomics is actually the hottest stock in America right now. This is on Finviz. You could see it listed like four different times on their front page. It's a top gainer. It's a new high. It's overbought, which I just mentioned. It's most active. It's it's had an absolute incredible run up. This is also on Finviz. This is the BNGO page. And something that I didn't notice before, insider transactions actions, there's actually been no six month changes in insider ownership in BNGO. This could mean one of two things. Either the insiders, executives in the company already have all of the shares that they wanted to purchase, or it means that they're waiting for some other type of impetus to purchase more. But with this type of run up, I can't imagine that's going to be happening anytime soon. Now this brings me to my next point, FOMO. Fear of missing out or FOMO is a social anxiety stemming from the belief that others might be having fun while the person experiencing the anxiety is not present. It's characterized by a desire to stay continually connected with what others are doing. FOMO is also defined as a fear of regret, which may lead to concerns that one might miss an opportunity for social interaction, a novel experience, or a profitable investment. Look, it's in my best financial interest if all of you guys go out and buy BNGO right now and drive up that stock price and keep it going, keep it moving, keep the volatility high, keep the volume high, but I don't want that. When I did my research and I made my purchase, I was below the analyst 12 month price projection. Those analysts are wrong sometimes, yes, but they are professionals. They are paid to research the financials of a company, to look into it directly, and they're the ones that make the investment decisions for these huge banking firms. They use their research. I'm just a guy on YouTube. When they make their price predictions at a buck 42, a buck 50, and I see the price below that, I'm comfortable at that point. But the fact fact is we are way beyond the analyst price predictions. Like I said, in after hours, it went up to 435 today. We are sitting at like a 400% gain on this stock. 
just calm down. I don't want you guys to FOMO in, lose your money, come back and blame me. I want you guys to make the purchase if you're confident in it, if you're using money that you can afford to lose. If you buy into this right now, if the stock goes down by two bucks, three bucks, and we're back down around a dollar, I don't want you to be thinking that your life is over. Right? I just want you to do what you're comfortable with. FOMO is real and I just want you guys to recognize it. That's all. I'm not some boomer telling you don't purchase it, but just do your research. Be confident in what you're purchasing. This is kind of a positive thing. One of the analysts that was covering it said that Sapphire is a game changer for optical genome mapping. Digital cytogenetics is one of the areas where Sapphire has the potential to change the clinical and diagnostic landscape, the five-star analyst said. Current methods are labor and time intensive and therefore costly. Sapphire offers more efficient and streamlined alternative, as well as potentially improved diagnostic yield. As more LDTs are developed, we anticipate that adoption for Sapphire could increase, driving revenue for BioNano. And this is what we saw last time. BioNano Sapphire is cheaper. It's more accurate. It's more effective. It's faster. It's like the trifecta of what market advancement needs. This analyst, McCarthy, reiterated his buy rating and upped his price target to $2. Previously, he was at $1.50 price target, but he did up it to $2, which is a huge increase for a stock of that size, but still we're two times his price target right now. This is a guy that studies the financials of the company that knows the product is innovative and he's still saying the target is about half of what the value is right now. Just keep that in mind. BioNano Customer Praxis Genomics accredited by the College of American Pathologists. They're going to be using Sapphire for their diagnostics, specifically for postnatal patients suspected of a constitutional genetic disorder. Praxis is going to be using Sapphire as an alternative to traditional methods of CMA and KT. Medical guidelines recommend successive rounds of analysis with CMA, KT, repeat expansion testing, single gene or gene panel testing, and whole exome sequencing until a pathogenic variant is identified or until the different techniques have been exhausted. <sighs> At Praxis, this tiered approach is replaced by the whole genome analysis using OGM with Sapphire. Praxis is gonna be taking all of that old time consuming stuff, tossing it out, replacing everything with Sapphire. This is going to achieve a higher rate of diagnosis, faster, easier, and at a lower economic cost to labs and payers. Since this product has been accredited, now insurance companies are going to be more likely to start paying for the Sapphire testing. Once insurance companies pay for something because it's accredited, that's what leads to medical adoption. BioNanogenomics granted a 180-day extension by NASDAQ to regain compliance with the bid price rule. If you're not familiar, stocks that are listed on NASDAQ need to maintain a price above a dollar. So in a letter dated back in April, NASDAQ notified the company that based on the previous 30 consecutive business days, the company's common stock no longer met the minimum dollar closing bid per share requirement. And the company was given 180 calendar days or until December 16th to regain compliance. BioNanogenomics filed for an extension and they were granted the extension. They were given another 180 days and this is until June 28th. Keep in mind, their first 180 days ended December 16th and the price shot back above a dollar a share on December 27th. And as long as it holds above that for a minimum of 10 consecutive business days, then they get the written compliance letter and we're good to go. Right now, we're already above a dollar for four consecutive business days. So as long as we keep this up for two weeks, and we probably will because there's going to be a lot of hype leading up to the symposium. And also the price is so far above a dollar. I don't even think this is a risk anymore. This is not the biggest news, but it's cool. It's always nice to have that safety net knowing that if something catastrophic happens, the company is not going to get delisted. Last couple bits, I do want to give a shout out to one of my viewers, Krishna CH. Krishna posted a couple of really interesting research links for BNGO in the comments of my last video. So this is a video that was actually posted by PacBio. And if you remember last week, I mentioned PacBio as a competitor of BioNanogenomics. Since I mentioned that, it has been brought to my attention that they are not a direct competitor. They're like a quasi competitor. They both deal with mapping, but they use different technologies and they have different approaches. So the two of them are actually more complementary. I will post this link below the video. This is yet another study about general
generation of local reference genomes using PacBio and BioNano data. This scientist, Ulf Gilliston from the University of Uppsala, found extra structural variants using both of these technologies together. I actually look at this as being even stronger because this means Sapphire can be used in conjunction with other technologies to improve them. That's an extra use case. This is really positive. The video is not long. It's under five minutes. Like I said, I'll post it below. Check it out if you're interested. Now, the last thing, this is another one that Krishna CH sent me. This is back from June and I missed this PR on their website. Bio Nanogenomics announces issuance of US patent for combined nanocheno nanobore device. Why I'm even going back to this, this is June. If you remember, one of the studies that was released in December that I covered in my last video, there was a mention that compared to PacBio, Sapphire was better at mapping long DNA. That was one of the areas that it excelled in. It could map long DNA molecules. It could manage them much better than the PacBio system. This is the patent for that technology that facilitates that. This patent protects the invention of adding nanopores to our nano channels, which we believe could be a key step step to solving one of the main limitations of nanopore sequencing. While commercialization of this technology is not yet on our roadmap, the upcoming patent allows us to confidently evaluate strategies for beginning that process. This technology is actually already integrated into Sapphire, and this is what gives them that edge on mapping the longer DNA molecules. There's an idea here that they can, in the future, commercialize this technology. And what that means is, once you get a patent on one of these technological innovations, you can end up securing more financing because you can sell the right to use this information to other genome mapping companies. They could apply it to their own devices, they could apply it to their systems, and then you can collect royalties for the usage. So this is kind of a big deal because I didn't understand before, this is a groundbreaking part of Sapphire's functionality. It's a potential future revenue stream for BioNanogenomics because they can collect royalties from other companies using this technology. That's all I've got for today. I'll be back on Sunday with my weekly video covering the other news from this week, but I did want to post this. I felt very compelled to post this because my channel has received a lot of love and a lot of support since I posted the bio nanogenomics video. I want to thank you guys so much. Thank all my new subscribers. I want to thank everybody who's taken the time to comment and like my video. And if you are interested in my channel, if you like the way that I cover things, please consider liking and subscribing and checking out my channel again on Sunday for my next one. Thank Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Happy New Year, and I hope 2021 treats you much better than 2020 did. That can't be hard.